Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I'm Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about The Deuce Season 3, Episode 1. It is the final season, this episode is called The Camera Loves You, uh, which is a little dialogue of the episode, it was in the trailer as well actually, so when it, when it popped up I was like, yes, I remember that line. Uh, but this is uh, set on New Year's Eve, well, most of it is, I mean, Mostly. The, yeah, the, the, the start of it's... Start before. Yeah, but I mean, we're getting into 1985, we're right at the end of 84. And the first scene, and I think I was actually really curious about how the first scene was going to play in this, because last season did this great job of the opening scene really kind of encapsulating where the characters had went in the last like five or six years in the time jump. You know, it started off in like... Uh, I was I was going to say, I can't remember what it was, and then I realised it was the great bar scene, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was Eileen walking out in the street, feeling yeah. like she's the queen of the world, and it follows her up into the bar, and it, yeah. you know, it was like, here's, here's how successful Vincent's being, and... The start of this season, by contrast, is a lot more dour because New York's uh, is shitty as it's been. Uh, there's those gangs, or just or even just packs of thugs uh, mugging people. Uh, Vincent is determined to walk Abby to her car or walk her home because things have gotten that kind of serious, and it's something yeah. you know because he says at one point, like, "Oh, this place just to have some class or something to that effect," and Abby's like, "Did it?" and Maybe not class in, in a traditional sense, but in the way he's thinking about it, where it was safe to walk down the street. Like, you wouldn't necessarily be... Yeah, in previous seasons, which must have started, what, early 70s? <clears throat> I think the first season started. Early to mid-70s, yeah. I think we've had about five years every... Five or six yeah, years every time. that sounds about right. Yeah, so when that started, he, he would never have felt the need to walk from home to this extent. Yeah, but you know, and sure enough, they actually see something happen in the way. They, they hide in the, uh, the sex shop for a couple of minutes. So... Yeah. He's proven right, and then later with Alston we see the same thing, where he's taken out, uh, he, he takes out the uh, Goldman, and they witness a mugging within 10 minutes, because he's like, I, I did not pick this time specifically, this is a random time, random location in Midtown, and we saw something within 10 minutes, that, that is how frequent this is. Yeah. Um, so, and it's funny, because I, I, I don't know a whole lot about the cleanup of New York, but I do know it's one of the safest cities in the world now. And this grimy 80s New York that we all think of when we think of New York in the movies is something that stopped existing. <laughs> it is something that changed uh, yeah. over time. I think, I'm not sure when it was officially cleaned, but I, I think the 90s were already kind of, you know, yeah, not the 80s, at least. Yeah. essentially. So uh, I'm sure people who, who know better can fill us in the comments, but we're clearly at this time where things are changing. And this, this show as, as, as a whole, from the very start, has been very much the change that's happening throughout this world yeah it's it's kind of done it through the lens of the you know the the, the porn industry and you know, before that you know we, we had the, the the pimps and the and the prostitutes but it's not been you know necessarily about just that in terms of being you know uh showing the world as a whole yeah yeah because uh, obviously we're, we're the vhs days now that was hinted at. i loved how the previously on ended with that one moment from season two Mm. Uh, with oh, I want to say Larry. No, it's not, it's not Larry. Larry. It's not Larry. Like first episode back, he wasn't in like the first thirty goddamn names. What the hell? Oh yeah, Larry was a character. In fact, where was Larry? No, no I'm thinking about it. Where the hell was Larry this episode? Yeah, yeah, but this wasn't Larry. This wasn't Larry. But I wasn't completely nuts. There was a Larry. <laughs> Harvey. Harvey. There you go. Harvey. He's Harvey. Which yes. I mean, uh, Larry. I mean, there's a similarity. Hey, I, I, I remember last season having a lot of trouble with both Eileen and Irene being in the same show, right? And I, I, it's, that still bugs me, quite frankly. Yeah, yeah. Don't do that to your audience. Uh, where was Larry? I, I guess story because we, we kind of said that he, him and Darlene, we said yes. that Larry and Darlene's stories felt like it ended last season and it wouldn't be shocking if we never saw them again, but we assumed we would. And this episode, they're not here, so... Um, I don't think I'd still be, wouldn't be too surprised to see Larry pop up at some point yeah more, I, more so the, the, than darlene yeah darlene's definitely felt like the story was done whereas i mean i think larry could pop up especially since if he's, if he's been trying to be an actor we'll see him at some point but to doing be fair that. i remember distinctly at the end of last season saying we didn't know for sure whether laurie would be back given that she set off to la to do her own thing and everyone else stayed near. we weren't sure but it makes sense given we're exploring to have someone in la seeing that it side does, of yeah. it uh so no that's, that's actually really interesting that we, we didn't see larry in this episode hmm yeah, uh, I feel like there was just lots of uh, ears burning when I said Larry for Harvey. <laughs> Everyone was like, "No, no, it's not a character." Yeah. Uh, but there is lots of Harvey in this episode. Uh, I mean, as as we typically do with this show, we should probably stick to one set of characters and and work through them. Uh, and sure, why not Eileen and 
and Harvey to begin with. Uh, they open with uh, some Kurosawa chat, which was delight- delightfully me. Yeah, yeah, always down for that. Um, I never actually quite caught which movie they were talking about. I'd have to check her, uh, uh, Kurosawa's IMDb to see, see what, what year it was to yeah. see what came out because they said it was before Rashomon, but after uh, uh, Stray Dog, so it's around forty eight, forty nine. Oh, yeah. I mean, it'd be pretty easy to work out with a glance at IMDb, I assume. Oh, no, it would be. It would be. But I, I, I don't think they said the name. If they did, uh, I, I could be wrong. But it's interesting to see, like, Eileen be impressed. They're just talking about filmmaking. They're talking about how, how Kurosawa used money. I know he had this skill. And that, that scene for me, like, was less about the show and more about just a little bit of slice of life in filmmaking. Because what Harvey says about... Um, you know, every, almost anyone, if they're given enough time and money, could probably make a movie. But the skill is not having everything and still pulling it off. Yeah, what I what I really like about this is in that moment there, it kind of just feels like you say, "Ah, oh, it's slice of life." It's it's showing how, where she is now in her you know directing career. But then you know later on, it becomes clear that no, 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 this is Harvey kind of going, "Hey, you know, may, maybe we don't have as much money as, as we would like, and maybe we need to try and do more with less. Yeah, and that's kind of a theme that goes throughout, because he's feeling that uh, pressure from a couple of things. Uh, their their income's not as good as it was. They're going to CES. And this is actually a lot of, little thing that I knew about. I knew that CA, CES in the early days had a porn section. because, yeah. And the reason why I knew this is be- before E3 existed, uh, games consoles did their thing at CES, and they were a smaller place than the porn. The porn was bigger. That was always a bit of trivia that came up, was that the porn industry had a bigger like area at CES than the games consoles did, which is ridiculous to think about now, given the E3 is a huge thing. I mean, at the time, I, bet, I guarantee you the porn made more money. <laughs> it pr- probably did. I, I imagine kids were more excited about it as well. <laughs> <laughs> they probably were. But still are, to be fair. I mean, just easier to get a hold of. Yeah. It is, yeah. But... What I did love about this, though, is when they're going through the, the regular floor and they, they go past the guy with the camcorders and he's trying to sell the camcorders. He's like, hey, $1,500, and I can set you up with editing equipment as well. And Harvey just looks disgusted. And he's like, goddamn camcorders. All, all it's going to take is for you know, Jim and Pam to realize... I don't know why I said Jim and Pam from The Office. I just... <laughs> random names. For Jim and Pam to realize they can do their own par and we're done. And Eileen's like, no, but like, you know, everyone thought TV was going to kill movies and that still exists. Uh, you know, the porn industry is still going to exist. And the funny thing is, is that today more than ever, like, p- p- people making their own stuff and just uploading that is easier than it ever has been. Like, if you think it was and easy... Lots of people do it. Yeah, and if you think it was easy during the camcorder days, like, that's nothing compared to now. And yet, the regular sort of big industry giants are still chugging along. Yeah. Somehow. What's in- What's interesting, obviously, just in terms of the the difference between then and now is here is is Harvey's concern is they'll film themselves and go, ah, and then we'll only need us. So they're not, you know, trying to sell it to other people necessarily. It's just they won't need to, to buy porn from elsewhere because they've got just their, their own. Yeah. Whereas now, obviously, they'll just film it themselves and <sighs> put it online. Yes, yes. Um, and he's wrong. He's, 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 he's so wrong. As, uh, as always in these circumstances. Yeah. But no one's coming to their booth, Harvey's getting frustrated, and they're like, oh, the, the price of tapes is going down. And this is another bit of history that I actually have some knowledge on, is uh, VHS tapes were silly expensive when they first appeared. Oh, like, yeah. See, to purchase them, because renting was the big thing, to purchase like a movie in VHS, I, I mean, I think, like, I don't think I'm wrong in saying they were like $100 at one point, if not more than that. Um, the idea was is that the video stores would pay the two hundred dollars for the rental version or whatever, or maybe even five hundred, whatever it was. But they'd make it up by renting it, you know, Rent hundreds it of times, times for, for ten dollars each. Yeah, rentals didn't cost ten dollars, but sure. <laughs> I, I'm just hypoth- You know, I'm just saying sure. based oh, off of you know, okay, you know, their income, you know, their, their expenditure, he, and then okay. Even in the mid nineties, when I was renting VHS tapes, it wasn't ten dollars. <laughs> no, no, I know, I know. If I recall, you got two movies for two nights for like, like I think it was five pounds at the time, or maybe four pounds, something like that. It was something like that. Yeah. It was always a package. It was always like two or three for a couple of nights. It was never just one, if I remember right. I mean, you probably could, but no you one did could, it. You could, but it was always like, just like an extra pound to add yeah. on the second one, usually. And you might as well. Yeah. I do miss the excitement of going to the video store. Obviously, everything we've got that was better, but there was a, a charm of like browsing the aisles and finding those yeah. weird movies and the gems and and whatnot um there was but i mean do you know what, what the, the you know obviously we're saying on now is better because 
it's i think it's harder to find things because you've got to look in all these different places if you don't know what you're looking for uis are generally shite on streaming services they are they are uh, but at least i can do it from the comfort of just sitting in my <laughs> own chair yes i recommend just watch for anyone who doesn't use it just to at least keep an eye on what's coming in as they as they appear you can at least mm. sort of see them that way it's very good yeah um i just watched deep star six on amazon prime last night because i saw it was there i thought oh i've never seen that i've heard of that underwater monster movie from what the 80s sure it was mediocre but it's the sort of thing where like oh that's there i'll watch it 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 would never get recommended never it will never show up in you know oh you know these cues whatever on on did you say where you watched that prime one? yeah right yeah oh god yeah, yeah no prime's chance. terrible it, the funny thing is, is I, found, I was on a couple of movies that, again it was like a literal filter movie called manhattan baby which i'm going to watch soon like that would never appear in the recommendations it would never appear uh just in a sort of browse feature because amazon prime is is pretty bad for browsing but amazon prime to, i mean this is a, the thing i think they have over netflix right now is amazon prime actually have a lot of interesting movies just kind of hidden away there's a lot of like 80s and 70s and 90s movies just kind of things there. they got cheaper basically basically they, they, they it just go it, it fills out their library but um uh, often interesting enough but not in the same way as the weird softcore porn they also have which you'll find but it, that, that's what you'll get on like page three of browsing you'll get like t-rex yeah. sex or something like that and it'll be like this photoshop cover and it'll look like dirt cheap and you're like yeah. what is this who, who like, made this stay wrong i i love amazon prime as a service uh you know in its video i think it has great variety it's also the best quality out of all the uh the current vod's i think it is yeah but it has unequivocally the worst ui it's uh, terrible to use if did. you don't know what you're looking for already yeah no it does it it they changed that a little bit recently uh, when you're browsing the channels it's not as a nightmare to click on like a section you get like a grid now rather than just because usually used to, what it used to do was go to just like as if you were browsing products on amazon with a big list and it was just yeah yeah so awkward to, now, now you get like a grid of things and you can sort of click on it and it, it's, it's better it's a little bit better browse yeah. it's not made for browsing though browsing's terrible um, what they need to do, they need to do that thing that Steam have where you can have curators so that you can go and like, okay, so that's a uh, big, mm. me, me and Tim, for example, on Screams could have a curated Screams After Midnight selection of what's on there and people could use that to find stuff. I don't know. That could be that's a fun idea. That's not a bad show. No, that could be a fun idea. Amazon should look into. Yeah, get, get on Amazon. But anyway. You're, wel so. you're welcome, Amazon. So, so they're debating that and the fact that they'll have to bring the prices down and Harvey's like, oh no, we're already losing so much money. This is, this is terrible. Uh, you know, we're going to have to be smart about this. We're going to have to make up for it in volume. Um, but, you know, basic, basic capitalism, right? Is you sell at a lower price, but you sell a lot more of it, and therefore you make more money than you ever would have at the higher price. Yeah. Uh, that's a simple idea. And they go and see this this new film from these these new hotshot producers. And uh, it was like New Wave Whores, <laughs> what did you say the title was? That sounds about right. And the whole idea is that they listen to the music and they just get horny and start. And, and Eileen gets almost offended, like, you know, into the scene and just kind of gets up and walks out. This is cheap shite. Yeah. And Harvey's like, yeah, but this is the stuff that's selling. And, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not worth it doing theatrical anymore. So we're going to go direct to video. And. Which I don't think she's got a big problem with that part of it. No, she seemed fine with that. Yeah. She was like, okay, cool. Uh, yeah. But she's like, oh, we're going to have to uh, lower the cost because we're going to have to lower the price. And because of that, the artsy fartsy stuff that you're doing is no longer something I can invest in. And she's like, no, I don't want to make this cheap crap. I, you know, I'm, I'm hitting Europe. And he's like, well, go to Europe then. But I, I can't fund it anymore. This is the business I'm in. I can't do any more than this. Hmm. Uh, it's hurting the balance sheets. So Eileen gets kind of pissed. She leaves, uh, goes back home. We find out her mother's sick, uh, which seems to have actually kind of softened her relationship with her father a little bit. Yeah. Uh, where I don't know if it's her specifically being sick that's caused this, but they seem to be on speaking terms. You know, she comes in and says hi to him and says, you know, how is she doing kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it also seems like her son, who would now be about 18, uh, given the time yeah, jump. Yeah, he was, he was definitely in high school last time we saw him, right? Was it high school? I thought, uh, maybe middle school, but either way, he's, he's, yeah, he's, he's, right. he's about, you know, 18 ish. So uh, he's missing right now. Not, not in a, we need to phone the police way, but in a, he's a little rascal and he's ran off somewhere yeah yeah uh, i i suspect he is probably 18 or 19 which is why it's like well he can go off and do what he wants yeah yeah we can't which is really why they're him. not obviously going to the police or anything like that but um again you know just un our character for for what we saw before 
Yeah, and it it begs the question, is this in any way to do with what his mother's lifestyle is? Is that an influence on him? Is that something that's affected him? How he's been treated because of who she is? Yeah, because that was a a big part of last season uh, with their side of things was, okay, no, is this going to affect him at school? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, People are going to find out. They're going to make fun of him. And we had that great moment at the end in the house where he was up top and she was downstairs and... Yeah. Uh, you know, like did, did, did she? He, she just missed her um, watching kind of thing. It was a really great scene, but mm. uh, so it really sets up kind of where she is, uh, and we end with her and, and Vincent as well. It kind of comes back to who I'd argue are the two most main characters is Eileen and Vincent, yeah, uh, and them just celebrating the, the new year as it goes to the boom, 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 boom. <laughs> I I didn't think the the shot leading into the base was as impressive as this show usually is. I got what it was. I got what it was going for with the nineteen eighty five like happy no, new year. I got thing. it. I got I it. it. The visual of I think it, it zoomed in above the bar like a clock. I think it was the clock it zoomed in on as it was doing it. I get it. I just don't think it was visually as impressive as, as a lot of the. No, no, it was it was, it was the uh, the TV. It said happy. It was yeah, happy was new it. year in nineteen eighty five. Yeah. It was on the TV. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, just uh, we glossed over just one thing. Uh, Corey Stoll shows up out of nowhere. Yep. <laughs> and did he's we like, know he was in this i don't remember he was never in it before no no but did, did we have like a a new story announced and he was in it oh we might have done I, if we did i'd forgotten about it it was a surprise yeah, uh but he's he's a bit of a yuppie he's got a lot more money than anyone else in this part of town seems to and she kind of comments in that he's very flippant about it yeah uh but he's trying to chat her up and given that we spend time on this i feel like we're going to see them together again this is going to be you know, and you know it's Corey Stoll. And it's Corey Stoll. He's going to be around. Yeah. Uh, whether or not she tries to exploit him for her movies <laughs> is a possibility. Yeah, some some nice easy funding. Yes. Uh, so we'll maybe see if that that becomes a thing. Uh, also, I like that he, he got like a top shelf brandy, but he still got in a little plastic cup. I just thought, <laughs> yeah. That was amusing to me. That's that's New Year's for you though. To be fair. No, I get it, but it's just uh, I hear top shelf. I expect a brandy glass where I'm you're standing swirling it. <laughs> no, you would. You would. <laughs> On any any other night of the year, yeah, even, because... even in a bar like that, seven too many drinks <laughs> on New Year's. Can't <laughs> yeah, keep up. Yeah. Oh, all, all, all bars are like this. Obviously, you you don't drink, so you, you've probably never been in a bar on New Year's. But nope. Um, no, they'll they'll charge even places that don't normally will often charge for entrance because there's you know okay they're that busy. There's that many breakages. <sighs> they'll if they can get out plastic stuff you know they'll just have to because it's that ba- that bad that's a great reason to charge admission though is that you'll actually have to turn people away you might as well put a price on it to yeah yeah it's, it's like usually it's free to get in here it's gonna it's gonna cost you 20 to, to get in because we're expecting that many breakages to cover it all hmm um so that, that was eileen's story uh so again you know we're seeing her we're almost seeing her struggle at the end because last season it was very much her blossoming as a filmmaker her really getting passionate about it in this end of it it's the the struggle of the filmmaker who's at the end of their, their prime and uh, not even their prime in terms of creatively just just in the sense that the world's not willing to fund her anymore the world's not going to wait around for her anymore yeah and curious to see how that how that plays out uh vincent on the other hand him and Abby are a very similar places to, to before. Uh, they still have an open relationship. Uh, we see yep. him go home at one point, and there's like a, a dangling chain on the on the door to suggest it, it's basically a college dorm kind of situation with a sock. <laughs> it's yeah, hey, I've much. got company. Uh, go away for a bit. So he goes and gets uh, some falafel or something. I don't know what he's in, and he he comes back and goes to bed. And I never got the context. I actually didn't quite clock what the context of this this meant the first time he saw it. Uh, until he was going back later with his his ex wife, uh, it was Louis Kazan's character, uh, yeah. because we saw them chatting a little bit at the bar, and we see Abby kind of staring. And this was a big thing last season was them clearly being jealous of each other, but at the same time insisting that they're wanting an open relationship, even though they're they're clearly jealous, especially when it comes to his ex wife, where there's a lot of baggage and a lot of, you know, history with. Yeah. And we know that Vincent last season was kind of starting to want a family and kids, something that Frankie has uh yeah. bizarrely which he i mean that, that's a point the the oldest kid is five yes so i mean that that we're, we're at least probably you know six years jump from last time then i guess yeah five six years yeah yeah, yeah i think it was like 78 79 last season it was right yeah, at the end of the enough. 70s uh so yeah um you know vincent they have this you know this this afternoon 
nooner, I suppose is the term, uh, him and his ex-wife, and then he goes to wish Happy New Year to, to, to Abby, and that's basically it. Vincent doesn't actually get a whole ton of stuff in this episode, uh, comparatively speaking. Surprisingly not, no. Um, compared to normal. Uh... Compared to normal. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in this episode to set up, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, we have to go about AIDS. Uh, as a sentence I didn't expect <laughs> to say. <laughs> Just, sorry, I, I knew that was obviously coming up. It was going to be a big thing. It's clearly going to be a big thing this season because yes. it's it's the, the mid eighties in the porn industry, of course. <laughs> yes, but just you blurting it out and just like oh shit, shit yeah we did some like age just really offhandedly like like you'd forgotten kind of caught me off guard i was not expecting uh no no rimming <laughs> i wasn't expecting that <laughs> that bit of advice from the doctor and i love that i love that bobby didn't know what it meant and i was sure I, I knew what it meant i was like i'm pretty sure i know what that is and it was it was exactly what i thought it was but it's yeah. also it's not something i bring up a conversation very often for normal but reasons on the other hand this is 2019 and we're all very much aware of things that maybe you weren't before again we have the internet <laughs> all these yep. things pop up from time to time and he you know he's like he's like oh that's a sticky guitar up someone's rectum and he's like why would i want to do that <laughs> Oh, I love Bobby. Oh, Bobby's great. But Bobby's <laughs> worried he's got something. It, it, what's funny is what he's actually got an ingrown hair is something I've had, funnily enough. So when he told him what he actually had, I was like, oh, I've had that. <laughs> <laughs> he's worried over nothing. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's he's concerned that he's maybe caught something, even though obviously it's associated more with the gay community. It's something that is obviously spreading into every, it's, everyone. It's permeated the social consciousness. Yeah. And obviously, we may talk about sexually transmitted diseases now. We, there's no focus on any specific group. It's just no anyone can sexually transmit a disease. It's just the way it is. Uh, yeah, and obviously, there's there's a, a lot less focus on AIDS than there was in the eighties. Yes, yes, it's just more of a blanket yeah. thing now for a lot of different things. But uh, he you know, he's worried. He, he admits that he's had he's cheated on his wife hundreds of times over the last ten years of being. Like, don't get me wrong. It's been over ten years. So it's not as bad as it sounds. Even if it's 100, that's 10 a year. That's a lot. <laughs> it is, it is. To cheat well, your wife, all, that's a lot. In his line of work, where he is, it's probably been three in one night before. Yeah, I'd be surprised if he's under 1,000, to be honest. Uh, 10 years working where he does. Yeah. Unless we're only counting each girl as once. Like, you know, we're not counting multiple times with the same girl. As... Uh, oh, okay, yeah. If we're counting each girl as once. And yeah, maybe, sure. maybe it'll be 70 or 80, if, if that's how we're counting <laughs> Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but he he's worried about this, um, and despite the fact that he's told uh, to be safe and whatnot, he does end up shacking up with some random woman. Uh, Lisa, I think her name was. And I'll remember that because he didn't know her name, and she had to say it herself uh, in the bathroom during New Year's. So, classic Bobby. Uh, classic Bobby. Uh, he's got a wig on his He's got a toupee. And I loved... <laughs> when it, see, when he was having sex in the bathroom... It was kind of flapping up and down. It was really making it, me laugh. It, it, it looks good in the sense that <clears throat> it's very obviously a toupee and that he's wearing it, but it, it's not, you know, it, it's not the, the set design trying to, all right, let's cover it, you know, or costuming, you know, trying to cover it up. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, no, no, this is the character wearing it. And, you know, I think it looks quite good for that. <clears throat> it, it also someone who's got insecure and is it's wearing a toupee. intentionally just bad enough to be real. Yes, yes, there you go. Uh, and obviously the other side of this story is Paul and Paul's actor boyfriend. And we see him kind of be nice to someone outside the, his, uh, his you know, fancy club at one point yeah. who's clearly already sick. Uh, we see him like sort of go in at first and say like, hey, where are all the flyers? And the guy's like, oh, someone stole them. He's like, why would they do that? It's like, well, because they'll want to be lectured. And it's clearly, you know, at the, at flyers, at the pamphlets about, about AIDS and about being safe and things like that. And uh, he also double checks, do we have a lot of condoms? Like he says, like, hey, do we have a lot of those? Like, he's yeah. like, oh, we're starting to run a bit low. So it's clearly... Very responsive. Yeah, it's clearly a concern. But of course, we see his his boyfriend, the actor, uh, when he's rubbing off his makeup after his play. Uh, we see just a little bit of a... Uh, it's like the skin's kind of been ripped away from this little patch. I'm not quite sure what to what to call it. But yeah, um, it's clearly the first symptom of something. And... Um, I you know it's, it's this thing where you know towards the end they're, they're they're dancing at New Year's and obviously his fancy club they've got like a, a fancy singer doing uh, the the ballet or the, the ballet the ballroom sorry the ballroom version of Old Lang Syne um, yeah. and you've got the traditional one at the the club and uh, I, I like the contrast between all the uh, the Old Lang Syne's 
Yeah. They were yeah, saying the nice. lyrics wrong for the record, though. I just want to point that out. Were they? They said of, not all. It's not Cup of Canis, it's Couple Canis. Thank you very much. It's a Scottish song. See it right. Um, I'll be <laughs> honest. I don't think there is anyone in the world who really knows the lyrics. They just, <laughs> you just go, oh, 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 that's it. Got it. <laughs> Ev- everyone. Everyone in the world. I'm telling you. Well, yeah, but it was the it was the singer singing it. I'm not, I'm not accusing. Okay, sure. I thought you were on about just in general. No, no, no. It was it was the 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 the, the singer at the fancy club said of. I think you, you might have to change it in that instance for oh, okay that, uh, for that version just to, to fit with the rhythm. All right, all right. I'll accept that. I'll yeah. accept that. But uh, so yeah, we're really setting up this this idea, and even even Rudy's feeling the hit because Rudy has one scene with uh, with Frankie where he's like, "Oh, yeah. my business is taking a hit because of the disease." So they're all feeling it. They're all feeling this this change, and even the opening scene, I felt New York felt grimier than it's ever done in the oh, show. Yeah, it really and it's never like... exactly been clean, has it? Yeah, and obviously they're expecting everything to change, and you know, obviously it's been like five years since they started building this big hotel with the the spinning restaurant and the <laughs> the big yeah parking like multi-story parking lot and stuff like that uh so again we've, we've got this thing where they're going to clean up the streets but they're they're dealing with the the crime which leads us to alston who is you know working for goldman and goes to kind of the, the crime unit that's been tasked with these these little uh, they call them wolf packs these these muggers that are running around yeah. and uh they're looking into that and we get a scene in new year's where he kind of like just kind of sits in on them taking down a couple of the guys uh, and just we don't get a lot of it. Um, I think the biggest scene here is when he goes to their their sort of headquarters and it's like leaking and it's dripping in the guy's coffee, the cop, and and he drinks it. And he's like, please don't drink that, and, and then he, he just drinks does. it anyway. Yeah. yeah, he still does. So because he's a badass, damn it. Yeah, um, I like their chemistry. I'll see later on when he's like, okay, you look, you look like a cop. Put your arm around me. Hold me. Yeah. Uh, he's like, what? Yeah. Just hold me. And it, I love how it just cuts when he says, "So are you a bottom guy or?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Just, you know, enough humor enough humor to make it work uh i will say i am a little disappointed that there the was no larry because he was very much a highlight of season two he was he definitely was he was um not that we're done talking all right i just i just wanted to mention that here because uh we're jumping to Lori, who is just at a rehab and i this this made me laugh because mm-hmm. uh, you know it, it's there it's okay she's leaving and the guy's like, okay, you know, you, 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 this is your program, you know, stick to it, you know, don't go out because we don't want to see you back here. And she's like, you know, it's all very much played like this is her first time there. And then she goes down to the car and it's like, oh, that was a fifth time. Yeah. Obviously, she's been going to different different rehab centers. And clinics? Of, clinics, yeah. And of course, she's uh, on cocaine again by the end of the episode. She gets really self-conscious at the party uh, that they're at, this gala. And yeah goes and uh she has some like fans some other actresses who have been inspired by her because she's been doing it for a few years now obviously yeah. uh who who offer a coke and she gets into it and she's like licking the the, the sheet oh clean. she's really going for it yeah yeah uh she she is diving in head first so and she, and she and it was noble that she was doing well up till that point where you know she was ordering you know non-alcoholic drinks it made yeah. a point of showing us her order the 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 non-alcoholic well I, I you knew it was going to go this because one of the things the guy said to her at the start was uh you know avoid you know you know people and locations that are going to be tempting and like yeah don't go to the the gala party where everyone's going to be drinking and it's yeah, exactly yeah. the sort of crowd who are going to be doing coke in the bathroom i mean i, maybe... I wonder if that's why she's been <clears throat> to rehab five times mm. It's the because, job. It's the job. It's doing yeah, exactly. It. Yeah. Because we have that small subplot about the the women against por- pornography and how it's like abusing the women and you know on face value is it or isn't it? But then you look at Laurie and you see what it's doing to her life and like how much of a mess she is, despite the fact that she's theoretically making a lot of money. That she's in LA. She's she's on this glamorous lifestyle, but she's been yeah. to rehab five times. She is, but yeah, but you know there are some others. You know, there's there's friends there that she runs into that seem well adjusted, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, at there's... least on on public perception on paper i mean obviously we're not we, gonna don't, yeah, we don't know these characters we don't know how screwed up they actually are but yeah. they come across as because you know, she gets out of rehab and the, the the two guys are like okay we've got you booked for the ces show just to make an appearance and then we're going to shoot you in like multiple movies because we need some more I, I think it was content for the pipeline was the way he phrased it, it was yeah. like the, it was the least fulfilling art artful way of saying it possible it was just we need content for the pipeline <laughs> yeah because it was oh yeah we're gonna shoot some stuff you know and, and she's like Oh, you know what's it for? Just oh, just just content for the pipeline. Just, you know, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll, we'll use it later. 
that's us every night. We're like, okay, what, what would it come tomorrow? We need content for the pipeline. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Make yourself look pretty, Connor. Content. <laughs> pipeline. That's uh, going to be our new line, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, come on, content for the pipeline time. Um, so, no, so I get it. We've got a bit of a tragedy there. Um, and I, it's at this point in the, the, the discussion where I say, have we missed any characters? Because I guess we don't talk about Frankie too much. He steals the uh, the camera in that because he's been shooting the, the films himself. Some yep. of the more sort of low-budget variety. Uh, uh, intentionally amateur looking. Yes, uh, because people like that. And... Yeah. He... That's why they're putting a wig on Melissa. And it's funny how they get the guys like, oh, I'm getting a sore neck, how long do I have to do this? Uh, and I love that uh, Irene's like, well, go down to the bottom of the bed and put your knees on the floor and it's, it's more comfortable that way. <laughs> She's giving them tips. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, no, amusing scene, but when you see what he's actually taking the camera for, he's, he's making a little video with his family, his wife and kids. Uh, and I love how the small child is screaming throughout the entire yeah. thing. And it still sounds to me like a sales pitch is, is what he was filming there because he's you know he's like oh, i'm your man so i don't know what exactly he's planning on doing this time because yeah no God idea because he because he turns down rudy although he is working with tommy and tommy is going behind rudy's back for this little side deal because tommy yeah. does not want rudy to know so i could see some fallout from that potentially yeah yeah i did so... like though that when Rudy was turned down, he's like, come on, Frankie, you've been stealing me, stealing from me for years, like, you owe me. <laughs> and like, I love that it's just a known thing that he has been ripping him off, like, in little ways, like, all it's, the time. It, but obviously, he's he's done his fair share enough over the years that it's like, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's easier to let him have the small little things yeah. and still have him bringing in profit than to cut him out entirely, apparently. And maybe he's just likable. Like, he's, oh, you know what, he's, he's not doing anything too bad. We like his brother a lot. <laughs> to be fair, he has always come across as likable to most characters. He has, he has. Uh, even if he's untrustworthy when it comes to He is, but he's a very charming or, fella. Or anything else. Uh, so, uh, there was one movie talk, actually. I just want to mention Abby was, like, talking to a guy at the bar, and they were just talking about movies, and she's like, is there anything else I need to see? He's like, what about Repo Man? you seen Repo Man? And I have seen Repo Man, for the record. Just, uh, <laughs> turn that out. He's like, Harry F. and Dean Stanton. And I'm like, yeah! Yeah, <laughs> he's great. So, yeah. um, not my favorite Harry Dean Stanton movie, but solid. So, yeah, but there's a lot to choose from. Oh, there is. He was making movies for like sixty years. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, no, nah, it's Paris, Texas. I was going to say it was Alien, but it's not. It's Paris, Texas. <laughs> and you forgot about that for a second, didn't you? Well, no, it's just because I think Alien's the more like mainstream one that people know. But then I was yeah, like, no, it's, wait. It's Paris, Texas so for me is, is high. Yeah, I've not seen that yet. So, which I keep meaning to to get around to because I should. I'm sure it'll be an influx someday. Uh, he'll give me an excuse at least. It's content for the pipeline, Connor. <laughs> All right. Well, if that's the case. <laughs> All right. I've been sick, by the way. Okay, I've been trying to keep my noises to a minimum. I think I've done an okay job, but that's if... why uh, he keeps ducking off camera. Yeah, I've been wiping my nose just off off the side so you don't have to watch it but yeah. uh, that has uh, been the episode 1 of The Deuce Season 3 we'll be back next week for episode 2 uh, by all means let us know what you thought of this first one in the comments uh, the filmmaker is pretty much as on point as it's ever been I like the contrast between the cities as well as soon as it cut to LA you knew it. It's it's right. even even, th even though it was like a close up of a, like a door at the exit of the building you still knew it was LA just because of the, the, the lighting just because of the way it looked yeah, the the direction is slick and spectacular. The 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 scripts are on point. You know, it's it's not Mr. Beat, is it? You know, and, and I think we said this last time as well. Though, even with a, a fairly significant time jump, and you feel like okay, you've got to get to know everything again. You know, figure out the pieces. It doesn't feel like you've missed anything. Yeah, the only the only plot that feels like it's not advanced enough for the for the time jump is maybe Vincent and Abby. It feels like they have not really moved in five years. Whereas everyone else, I think, very realistically, it feels like that's, you know, where they'd be. It doesn't feel like much has moved for them. I, I wonder if they're just in a holding pan and that's going to yeah. be a big, uh, like, a, the point of, of this for them. Yeah. Whereas with everything else, the idea of it's taking this long to build this new stuff in town, the idea that it, it's taking this long for the, the red tape here, it's taking this long for, uh, like, the VHS to become what it is now. Like, all these things all kind of feel like, okay, the time has passed and we've used that time. Whereas Vincent and Abby, it almost feels like, this could have been set a month later and it would have worked just as well. But obviously, they have to line up yeah, with everything yeah. else. So. Yeah. I'm uh, sure there's a point to it. 
But hey, uh, that is it. So thank you very much for for checking this uh, review out. Uh, you can let us know what you thought of the the episode in the comments. Like and subscribe, all the usual things. You can of course support everything we do here on the channel over at patreoncom slash TV for as little as one dollar per month, and you get yourself some bonuses and there's higher tiers of course with the voting rights and uh, producer credits and all that kind of thing. So go and have a look. Uh, if you would like to be the mob to our little industry, then you can go and be a producer. Uh, just like Frankie. <laughs> yes. Just like Frankie, Frankie to our Rudy. Uh, the Frankie to our Rudy. <laughs> so, um, that is us. Uh, so thank you once again for uh, watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching TV, guys. Have you got it, Vanilla?